Hey guys, the occasion we're back with more vintage headphones. Today we have pretty rare headphone. Now I've featured a lot of incredibly rare headphones in the past, like the AKG K1000, like you know the DT48s that I have a lot of them, the R10s. But uh, this one is pretty special because this is the first time I featured this brand on my channel, and that is Stax. Uh, this is the Stax SR Sigma. Now. Most of you guys, I, I'm pretty sure most of you guys have never heard of uh, this brand. I mean, I know a lot of audio files are there in, in my community, but in my channel that is, but still majority of my audience does not know a lot about, you know, high end headphones that much as much as the other people do. So Stax is a very old company, you know, one of the oldest audio companies out there. I've, I've, I've always been. Uh, not a huge fan of the company, especially the SR009, which I've spoken a lot of bad things about. But I don't hate Stacks. I, I have to make that clear. I, I like Stacks, but I don't. I don't think the 09s, when the hype was there, they were as good as people made it out to be. So, Stacks is a company I like, and this is the SR Sigma, which I think is one of the greatest headphones they ever made, apart from the SR Omega, which is, you know, I think one of my all-time favorite headphones uh, alongside the AKG K1000 and the R10s but the SR Sigma is a headphone that is not as expensive as the Omega but I still think is as significant as the Omega if not the significance is the same because both these headphones I think uh, you know really marked uh, something in the history books of, of, of headphones so the SR Omega uh, the SR Sigma that is is uh, one of the most interesting headphones ever made now the sr sigma that i have right here with me is the stax uh, low bias the normal bias that is the 230 volt bias version there are two versions well actually there are three versions of the stax sigma ever made uh, this is the normal bias the 230 volts and the, you have the pro bias that is the 580 volts and then you have the pro bias with the sr404 drivers uh, these are the sigma drivers there is a uh, the, the the pro stacks uh, i think after you know they before they completely discontinued the sigma they did some refurbishing of the sigmas with the sr404 driver so if your sigma died or if there was some problem stacks when you send them in for replacement they basically just put uh, sr404 drivers and sr404 cables so uh, you know that is something to keep in mind now, my version right right here is the original stock first generation normal bias uh, classic Sigma. These are the most common out there. Uh, these are very easy to find. Uh, well, no, but by easy to find, I mean easier to find compared to the uh, the, the Pro Sigmas as well as, uh, and the uh, 404 Sigmas. So the normal bias is easy to find and is the least expensive in that uh, in that uh, you know line of headphones. You know the Pro bias can go all the way up to two thousand dollars sometimes depending upon the condition. The normal bias can go from you know. $500 all the way up to $1,500. $500 is a very bad condition, most probably not working condition, but you can find them in, in that price if you look around. But nowadays, especially since 2015, 2016, the prices of the Sigmas have skyrocketed and they are quite expensive headphones. I paid not a lot for mine because mine, I don't know if you're if you a keen observer, you might notice something is different with my Sigmas and that is the headband. This is not a stock headband. I actually made this headband completely fabric fabricated the headband designed the headband exactly to my specification of my head and these fit only my head well <laughs> they can fit your head but the the fit m might be uh, a bit bad i mean i have something to keep in mind so i you know when i got these headphones they, they, they had no headband so i had to design one from scratch uh when i was designing the sigmas i you know 3d printing see the thing, thing about the sigmas is that they're very bulky headphones and before i got them i was scared that when I make a headband, it, it would not be strong enough to hold the Sigmas. But in reality, the Sigma enclosures are not as heavy as you might think. These are actually a very, this is actually a very lightweight headphone. I would say this headphone is lighter than uh, the HD 800. Uh, but I would say it's exactly the same as the HD 800. So it's, it's, it's a very lightweight headphone and it shouldn't be a big problem in terms of, you know, clamping and, and just the overall weight on your head. So you might look at it, you, you might think it's such a bulky headphone. It is, but it's not heavy, which is a good thing, I think. So the headband, the, the 3D printed headband, this is made up of ABS, 100% infill. Uh, it is quite sturdy and it's very easy, you know, to, you know, handle this headphone without worrying about breaking it. So the SR Sigma 
with my 3D printed headband. You can find these files on Thingiverse. I've kept all of them free. I don't charge. These these are menial things. I don't consider them to you know be significant enough to charge money. So everything is free. So if you have a Sigma and if you broke your headband and if you need a new one, you can use my headband. This will also work with the Stax Lambda and all the SR uh, you know the, the signature uh, signature series. So it's a uh, intercompatible headband that I've designed for you guys. So you can you know design that, uh, print them out and uh, just uh, make sure the scale and everything is is uh, slightly different than mine because this is you know spec to my head it might fit yours but again you know experimentation is very important especially the clamping force because this is the part I, I specifically you know designed you know i didn't want a lot of clamping force so the sigma you know it launched in 1977 the normal bias then you had the pro that came in 1987 10 years later so sigma has been in production for a very long time but even considering that it's a very rare headphone another interesting thing about the sigma is that sigma was launched two years before the sr lambda was so when the sr1 sr2 sr2 and sr3 and sr5 headphones were there after that we had the sigma so sigma was if you look if you look at it in a way this headphone marked the beginning of the modern stacks headphones because after the sigma came the sr lambda then we had the omega omega 2 and the 07s and o072 uh, mk2 and then the 09 so these headphones you know started uh, coming and uh, started you know the development started because of the sigmas sigmas uh very fascinating headphone i have to say i mean i really like these headphones uh and i'll go over the headphones in a bit but let me talk about amplification uh, I, I bought these headphones and they came with the SRD7, uh, the original SRD7. Now, SRD7, there are many versions. SRD7, one thing to keep in mind, is an energizer. It's not an amplifier. So you need a amplification, uh, you know, going through it. So that's something to keep in mind. So the SRD7, there are versions, uh, you know, uh, where you need to plug in. And there are versions that are, se or, you know, self-biased. This, the Sigma, sorry, the SRD7 that I had, is not self-biased and it needed amplification but the guy who i bought it from the the t amp was inside the enclosure so it's a very compact srd7 one of the best srd7s i think on the planet so all you gotta do is take a 3.5 mm jack plug it into your dac or uh, your, your dap or your phone or whatever that srd7 is one of the most compact srd7s out there it's just plug in uh in, into the wall because it's not a self-biased version plug the 3.5 into your phone and then it's a portable stacks unit so SRD7, my SRD7 is as close as you can get to an SRD-X, which was the portable Stax amp uh, for Stax headphones. So uh, the SRD7 sounds very good with the Sigmas. I would say it sounds quite good and quite, you know, acceptable, especially with my T amp, which is something to keep in mind. I also use the Sigmas with my SRM1 uh, MK2s, but I don't really like that combination that much because the normal bias is a very dark headphone to begin with and with the uh, SRM1 that, that, that is going to my Mojo, Chord Mojo is a very dark sounding system, you know, even after correction, uh, first of all, significant correction required uh, after that, you know, I still think the, the fidelity with my SRD7s is just a bit better, to be honest, I just like the synergy of my SRD sounds because the amplification of the SRM1 with the normal bias and the Chord Mojo is just too dark. So it's a great amplifier, one of the best amplifiers, stacks amplifiers ever made, transistor amps, solid state. I, I, but you know, I think Sigma normal bias is not meant to be in that system. It's just too dark sounding. The Sigmas, very big headphone. These headphones are like the AKG K1000. These, these will not get you laid, but that that's not what this headphone is all about. Um, it's first of all sound of this headphone i'll come to that in, in my review whenever, whenever i do that but i i would say it's one of the most interesting sounding headphones i, I prefer this over my hd 800s but i do not prefer this over the akg k1000s i like the the k1000s still are the king of imaging king of uh you know separation i mean nothing can touch that even not in the sigma but the sigma i think is the closest to the akg k1000 and much better than the hd 800s in terms of just the separation uh, and, and and imaging is concerned uh also, one thing I forgot to mention is that I've also added an Alcantara headband as well as an Alcantara uh, covering over the drivers because the inside of the part, there's a, there used to be a foam which is not available anymore, but that used to protect the drivers from the dust because the drivers are right here, as you can see, 
exactly right here are the drivers so the drivers are you know and there is this wool surrounding the wool is insulating everything and here are the drivers and you know it's 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 a great sounding headphone i have to say but you have to listen to it you know it's it's not gonna blow your mind like you might think oh my god the drivers are right here but it is still quite good and uh, you know I, I still have to work on on my review and and my my overall my impressions i'm still working on them to give you guys a you know final taste of this headphone but overall i'm, I'm quite impressed by the sigmas i really like them i think uh, they're a pretty fantastic headphone one of the most uh, influential and one of the most important stacks headphones out there stacks headphones ever made i, I really like these uh, these sigmas 1977 was the date these were born stack sigma i'll see you guys next time with more vintage headphones take it easy and like always have a good one all right